Amen. Amen. It's going to be a lot better. Amen. 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 We sometimes act like we're depressed and sad all the time. Friend, we got something better coming for us. Oh, yeah. Amen. I'm telling you what. Amen. It ain't going to be nothing like this world. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 19. Sunday school this morning, Eddie taught on Elisha. And so I'm going to try to preach on Elijah. Amen. We're going to try to. Uh, we might not. Amen. <laughs> We're going to try to do whatever the Lord have us to do. Uh, this morning is where the Lord has, has kept us this week and, and, uh, uh, and has, uh, has given us a thought here, uh, uh, given us something a little, uh, that's, not, that's not new, it's nothing new to you and nothing new to me, or it shouldn't be probably, but uh, something a bit different, amen, a different thought, amen, and I ask for your attention this morning, amen, uh, I certainly do, amen, uh, I believe preaching time is important. I've had about three people, amen, believe it's important with me, amen, amen, and two-thirds of them was my parents, amen, so, amen, that's sad, amen, amen, everyone stand when you get turned to 1 Kings chapter number 19, and uh, we'll look in the Word of God this morning and try to see what the Lord has for us. Look in verse number, uh, uh, we're going to go over most, much of this, but let's begin reading in verse number 8, and we'll read a few verses here. And uh, uh, then go to the Lord in prayer. It said, And he arose and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither into a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy promise with the sword. And I, even I, am only left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth, and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Let's pray. Father, we uh, desire your help this morning. Lord, I need you to inhabit this message. I need you to inhabit this building. I need you to remove all hindrances and distractions from the service this morning, dear Lord. I believe you can. And Father, I pray that you would help your people this morning in this message, dear Lord. Help it speak to our hearts, dear Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. And amen, amen, you can be seated, amen. I want to, uh, in a way, kind of uh, uh, by introduction to uh, preach up to where I'm going to go, amen, let me say it like that, that might be the easiest way to put it, amen. You know the story of Elijah, amen, uh, uh, and, and uh, like I said, Brother Eddie, the uh, Lord laid it on his heart to speak on Elisha this morning, amen, and uh, we kind of touched a little bit on the life of Elijah, but Elijah... Amen. In chapter number 18, just one chapter ago, amen, Elijah is what I would consider, and it might be a matter of opinion, but Elijah's become the most powerful prophet in the Old Testament. I mean, he has literally called down fire from heaven. Amen. In a literal sense. Amen. He didn't just, uh, 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 in, in, in a figurative sense, I mean, he literally called down fire from heaven. Amen. It was him versus 450 prophets of Baal. Amen. And, and he told them to call on Baal, and they called on Baal, and Baal didn't answer because Baal ain't real. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, Baal wasn't real. Amen. He wasn't going to answer. Amen. Elijah, he called on God. Amen. And, and, and God answered. Amen. With that sign of fire from heaven, licked up the altar. Amen. And then you find, amen, that Elijah slays all those prophets of Baal. Amen. I believe he slayed ever all 450 of them. Amen. I believe he did. I, I believe that for you and I. Say, preacher, what's that mean for you and I today? That means you and I need to get rid of the false doctrines and the false gospels in our lives. Amen. We need to slay them. Hey, I, I want you to know this. We ain't living in the world of the zombies. Once it's dead, it's dead. Amen. Amen. Once it's dead, it's dead. Hey, once you slay it, it's dead. Amen. We need to not just put it on ice for a little while. I mean, we need to kill it. Amen. We need to kill, amen, uh, the thought of ever using an NIV Bible. Can I preach for a minute? Amen. We need to kill the thought of ever uh, bringing in contemporary music into our church. Amen. We need to kill that thought. Amen. Not put it on hold, but kill it. 
amen, and say that's never going to happen, amen. Oh, there's many other things, amen. And we need to kill the thought of putting any strobe lights, <laughs> amen, and, and fog machines in here, amen. Amen, it won't happen, amen. I can guarantee you that. You want to put that in there, you'll see me at the door, amen. Amen, that's just where I stand on that, amen. But he, he killed those prophets, amen. He killed those prophets, the rain come, amen. And, and, and Ahab goes and tells his wife, I mean, he's a real man's man. <laughs> Amen. He ain't got the guts to do anything himself, so he goes and whines to the woman. Some of you men, amen, need to listen to that. I got quiet in here real quick. Amen. Don't go whining to your wife if you ain't got the guts to do it yourself. Amen. That was wrong. <laughs> Let me say that. Amen. It's quiet in here. Ooh, Lord have mercy. I might not have changed the message. <laughs> Amen. Preach on that for a minute. Amen. Amen. But Ahab told Jezebel, that's her name, Jezebel, amen, uh, uh, all that, uh, uh, that Elijah had done. That's what verse number one of chapter 19 said. He said, with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And then what happens here is Jezebel comes and sends a message to Elijah. Amen. And here's this prophet that is on, on uh, that is on the top of the world, amen. Uh, figuratively speaking, amen. Most powerful uh, he's he's been, amen. The most powerful of any prophet that's ever come at this point in the Bible, amen. In chapter number eighteen, but in chapter nineteen, this very same prophet gets depressed on a message from a woman. I mean, let that sink in for a minute. Amen. Uh, uh, he's just taking on 450 to 1 odds and some woman who ain't even there sends a messenger to him. Amen. And he gets depressed. Amen. We find, uh, we find that she, she makes a swear. Amen. She said, so let the gods do to me. Now, if you've got a King James Bible, amen, uh, that verse number 2 of chapter 19, that's little g gods. Amen. That means this. That means they don't exist. That means they ain't real. Amen. That means they have no power. They have no bearing, amen. They have no uh, footing in this world, amen. It says, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as one of them uh, by tomorrow, amen, about this time. Amen. So she said, Elijah, I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to do it by tomorrow. And I swear on these false gods, amen, that I'm going to do it by tomorrow. Amen. Uh, say, preacher, what was that? Let me tell you exactly what that was. That was an empty swear. It was an empty threat. Amen. And it was, an, it, it was uh, and, and, and you'll find, amen, as we read on down, it was empty action. Amen. amen. Nothing come of that. Amen. But she said, here's today, I'm going to kill you by tomorrow. Amen. And Elijah saw it. Amen. And you and I, we read this text, and we say, man, Elijah, you're just, you, you were just up there on Mount Carmel, and you were calling down fire from heaven. And you see this, Lord have mercy. Elijah, you ought to write back and say, bring it on, sister. <laughs> Amen. Like, what are you going to do to me? I'm not scared. Amen. But, but the Bible said that in verse number 3, when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. That terminology means he ran for his life. He got scared. He got nervous. He got worried. Amen. And, 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 and he came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there is what the Bible said. And it said that he, went, he, he himself went a day's journey into the woods. And, and, and Elijah, I'm not going to read all this for a second time because I want to get to my message this morning. But Elijah writes his own suicide note. He said, Lord, it's enough. Preached a message one time here at this church on, is it really enough? You don't get to dictate that when it's enough. Amen. You don't get to call the shots on when you're going out of this world. Amen. And he, I mean, he says, Lord, take my life from me. I, I'm ready to go. Amen. And he lay and slept under a juniper tree. Amen. A lot of times we forget. We think the story ends there. Amen. But let me say this, friend. I say, preacher, what happens? This servant of God goes back on God. He goes back on God, amen. God's been so good to him in one chapter, amen. And the next chapter comes, amen. And, and in, in one chapter time, he's ready to quit. He's ready to be done with the whole thing, amen. But notice the Bible, I find out that an angel is sent, amen. And, 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 and left him a cake there and a cruise of water at his head. And the Bible said in verse number 6, and he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And then the angel come by the second time. Not only, I mean, not only, he ate and drank and went right back to the juniper tree 
I want you to say that. Notice that this morning. He, went, he ate and drank and then went right back, amen, back into the mess that he was already in. Amen. amen. He got out of the mess, enjoyed the benefits of God. This will preach for, for a minute. Amen. He got out of the mess, enjoyed the benefits of God for a few minutes, and then went right back to the mess that he was in. Amen. But and say, preacher, how could he do this? Amen. How could he do this? Amen. I want you to notice this, friend. Amen. Even when the servant of God was less than good to God, God was still good to the servant. Amen. Can I say this to you this morning? Even when you're rotten and low down and dirty and you treat God every way that you would never want to be treated, he's still good to you. Amen. I get so sick and tired of Christians. Amen. And I'm talking Christians. I ain't, I ain't preaching to the lost right now. I'm preaching to Christians. Amen. And they'll say, oh, well, bless God, so-and-so did this to me, and when I see them, I'm going to repay that to them. Christians, God's people, that ain't Christ-like. Amen. I'm glad God ain't never repaid to me what I've done to Him. Amen. Amen. I, I'm sure glad. I'm sure glad. There's times. Amen. I'm not glad that there's times I've turned my back on him, but I'm glad that when in the times I've turned my back on him, he ain't turned his back on me. Amen. Amen. I, I, I don't deserve uh, the blessings. Amen. You see it all the time. They'll say, "Oh, so and so deserves the rotten hell." Friend, you deserve the rotten hell. Amen. I deserve the rotten hell. Amen. And once we get to realizing that, we'll be better Christians. Amen. Amen. But, but the angel of the Lord comes a second time, verse number 7. And it's still good to him. It still, it still feeds him again. It said, Arise and eat. It said, The journey is too great for thee. And I want you to look at verse number 8. Notice what happens here. It said, And he arose and did eat and drink. And then get this. And went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights under Horeb, the mount of God. Now, now, I want you to notice, go back to verse number 2 real quickly, real quickly, real quickly. I'm almost to where I want to preach at. Amen. Verse number 2. Jezebel said that she sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Verse number 8. And he arose and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights. Amen. So, preacher, what are you trying to say? You find Elijah at the end of verse number 8, 40 days, or 39, I guess you could put it, 39 days away from the threat. He's escaped the problem that put him under the juniper tree. He's escaped the problem, amen, that caused him to get out of the will of God. Amen. And, 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 and let me say this, friend. Jezebel, she's nowhere to be found. Amen. Jezebel, actually, uh, uh, the Bible, amen, you, it doesn't even mention Jezebel to uh, Second Kings when Jehu kills her. Amen. Amen. Uh, but let me say this, friend. Amen. I, I mean, she's gone. Amen. She's, uh, she's not a problem. She's out of sight. It's out of mind. Amen. It's taken care of. The problem has sufficed for 39 days. She's 39 days late on her threat. Amen. And I want you to also notice that. Like I said, you don't find her in the second Kings. Amen. She was still alive because the gods didn't do anything to her because they wasn't real. <laughs> amen. Those gods that she swore by. Amen. It was the safest swear she ever did. <laughs> amen. Amen. They couldn't do anything to her because they wasn't real. She didn't swear by anything. Amen. Uh, but, but we find that. And I want you to look at verse number nine, though. Look at verse number nine. I want you to see this. This is where the Lord met with me on this message. He said, and he came thither. Unto a cave. And the Bible says, and it says, and read these two words with me real quick. Lodged there. Come into a cave and lodged there. Amen. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this. That word lodge. I looked that word up in the Webster's Dictionary. When, and, and used as a verb, amen. That word means to become firmly fixed. Say, preacher, what do you mean? It means you're settled. You're settled for a minute. Amen? You ain't got plans moving when you've lodged somewhere. Kind of like you go on vacation. Amen? Let me give you some insight on a web family vacation. Amen? <laughs> you go on vacation and, and we stop at the store before we go back to the hotel. And then when dad says... I, need, I ain't got no Reese cup. I ain't got this. And mom says, James, we're not going out again. 
It means we've lodged for the night. <laughs> it means we ain't going nowhere else that night. You lodged there. Amen. You're firmly fixed where you're at. And the Bible says Elijah came into a cave and lodged there. Amen. And let me say this, friend. 110%, the cave was the wrong place to be. You'll find in your Bible, you read your Bible and you study the Old Testament, you'll find the cave is, is never a good place. Amen. Uh, David uh, uh, wrote the psalm where he said, I looked to my right and beheld no man. Amen. He wrote that from a cave. Amen. Depression has set in in a cave. Amen. And, and let me say this, depression will sit in in a cave. Defeat will sit in in the cave. Amen. Discouragement will sit in in the cave. Amen. Uh, uh, destruction in your life will sit in in the cave. Amen. And, but let me say this. Let me, let me just say this to you. Simply put tonight, or this morning rather. Amen. The cave is not the will of God. You see, it wasn't God's will for Elijah to go lodge in a cave. Amen. And, and it's one thing if he went to a cave and came out. But the Bible said he lodged there. Amen. I don't know if I'd ever seen that before. Amen. Uh, the Bible said he lodged there. And I want to preach on this thought this morning. Entitled this message on getting comfortable in a cave. Getting comfortable in a cave. It's not good advice. Amen. It's not what you and I ought to do. Amen. Because like I said, the cave is very much outside of God's will. Amen. It sure is. Amen. Amen. Uh, to the point even, amen, of God saying to Elijah, amen, the Bible said there in verse number 9, he came thither into a cave and lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest here, Elijah? What are you doing here? <laughs> is what he said to him. Elijah, what are you doing here? Amen. And let me say this, friend. Amen. I, I, I want to tell you a few things this morning, amen, about being in that cave. You know, you and I, amen, at times, amen, in our lives, amen, I believe this, amen, uh, uh, we sin, amen, uh, for all sin comes short of the glory of God. That's Bible, amen. Uh, we're going to sin, amen. But, uh, friend, don't live in sin. Amen. Uh, you, you're going to sin. Friend, ask God for forgiveness for it, get forgiveness for it, and go on. Amen. Serve God. Amen. Don't live in sin. Amen. Hey, friend, listen. Amen. Uh, 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 and, and, and there's many folks today that are living in sin. Amen. That's what Elijah's doing when he lodges in this cave. Amen. He has settled himself into living in sin. He has settled himself into living outside of the will of God. Amen. You and I as Christians, amen, it's not right for you and I to live outside of the will of God. Amen. Uh, the cave was not the will of God. Amen. Now let me say this. Say, preacher, why, why is this true? Why is this true? Amen. What do you mean by getting comfortable in a cave? Well, I want to preach on, really, on why you shouldn't get comfortable in a cave. Because I want you to notice just three things the Lord gave me in this text. Amen. Notice this. As long as you're in the cave, you're limited. You're limited. I want you to think about the life of Elijah so far. I mean, he has... Uh, uh, touched that, uh, 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 he went to the widow's house. He made an impression there. Amen, that's that chapter 17, right? Amen, he makes an impression there, amen. He touches those lives there, amen. He goes on, amen, and he goes and stands. Hey, hey, friend, get this, he doesn't stand uh, uh, to the, uh, 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 the leaders of the church. He goes and stands in front of the king. He goes and gets in front of the king. Amen. He goes, uh, say, preach what you mean. He doesn't uh, keep trimming at the legs. He goes to the head. Amen. Stands in front, boldly in front of the king. Proclaims God boldly in front of the king. Uh, 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 prophesies boldly in front of the king. Amen. Amen. And then uh, boldly in front of 450 people that are serving false gods. Amen. Uh, all of these uh, folks, amen, that are, that are seeing him. Amen, but now he's in this cave. And let me say this, as long as you're in the cave, you're limited. And say, preacher, what do you mean? You can't witness in the cave. Nobody's going to see anything Elijah does right now. Amen. I mean, uh, he's still, uh, he, he's just coming off, amen, chapter 18, uh, the highest maybe he's ever been in Christ, amen. Uh, you'd think he's about to run through and preach a revival in every town he goes through, amen. He's about to set the world on fire, but he ends up in a cave. 
Outside of the will of God, amen. Let me say this, outside of the will of God, you can't witness. Amen. You can try, but you won't do it. Amen. Because let me say this to you. Let me help you this morning. Let me help you. Amen. I get the ugly stuff out of the way so I can get sweet later. Amen. But, but let me say this to you, friend. Amen. When you're outside of the will of God, you know it, number one. Amen. And let me say this. Your friends will notice it. Your friends will notice it. Boy, I've tried to witness before. Let me just preach on me. I've tried to witness before being outside of the will of God. Living like the world, trying to witness somebody about God. That don't work. Boy, I've had them look right in my face and say, if you're going to heaven, I'll be fine. Boy, that hurts. Uh, well, if, if you're a Christian, then I'm a Christian. If, if, if you can treat so-and-so like that, and I treat them better than that, then surely goodness, I'm fine. <laughs> you can't witness in the cave. You're limited. You're limited. You can't witness. Let me say this, friend. Amen. As long as you're in the cave, as long as, long as Elijah was in this cave, he couldn't work. Some of y'all said, praise the Lord, let me find me a cave. <laughs> I mean, you can't work for God. Amen. We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That's what the Bible said. Amen. Which God hath before ordained. That means this. You know what that means? It's going to blow your mind. That means God has something for you to do and He's had it for you to do for a long time. God hath before ordained that we should walk in there. Friend, let, let me tell you, amen. Let me, let me say this to you this morning, amen. You cannot work in the cave. You can do some work, but it won't do anything. Amen. Your work won't work in the cave. Amen. You're out of the will of God, amen, you'll just make people mad. That's all you'll do. Amen. And make yourself mad in the process. Amen. Amen. Let me say this to you just briefly this morning. You can't worship in the cave. You can't worship God in the cave. Amen? You, cer you certainly cannot. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I, I, I sure, sure to the goodness, he, he can physically worship God in the cave. No, outside of the will of God, your worship will be worthless. Get a hold of that this morning. Amen? You can lift up the hand and you can uh, force out a tear, pinch yourself and <laughs> cry a little bit, amen? But it ain't going to work. Amen. God ain't going to be within 10 miles of it, friend. Amen. Amen. Listen. Amen. And when you're outside of the will of God, you're limited. Amen. You as a Christian. Amen. I'm speaking about your life this morning. Amen. When you're outside the will of God and what God has for you, there's things you cannot do. Amen. Say, preacher, I can do all things. You read the rest of that verse through Christ with strength me. You're outside of the will of God. Christ ain't in you. Amen. Christ ain't, Christ ain't working through you. Amen. You're not going to do anything through Christ when you're outside of the will of God. Amen. As long as you're in the cave, let me, I want you to, let me say this. Let me, let me say this briefly to you. As long as Elijah's in the cave, he can never replicate what happened on Mount Carmel. He's never going to see that again as long as he stays in the cave. Amen. He's never, let me say this uh, while I'm here. Amen. Uh, this wasn't in the outline, but you can have this for free. Amen. It's like going to Hardy's and getting extra gravy on the biscuit. Amen. Uh, but let, let me say this to you, friend. Amen. Uh, 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 he can never see the results of what he did at Mount Carmel as long as he was in the cave. You know, some folks uh, get out of church because of depression and discouragement. I mean, they go to church and they're, they're serving God. They're uh, uh, participating with every program that the church has. They're uh, singing in the choir. They're uh, doing this and they're doing that. And, and, and they get discouraged and depressed, not, not, not because of the things of God, but because nobody's noticed what they're doing. Friend, you're, doing, you're, you're not in the will of God in the first place then. Amen. Amen. It's not about people noticing what you're doing. Amen. Uh, let me say this. When you get in the will of God, amen, the results will come. The results will certainly come. You get in the will of God. Amen. I, I believe this. Amen. I, I remember this. Amen. When we first started, amen, uh, 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 going out and knocking on doors. I told some people, amen, uh, 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 here in the church and outside of the church, told a lot of folks. And uh, uh, I remember folks outside of the church, man, they tell me, say, don't work. It don't work in this day and age. And, I, and we have what? Probably 15 people coming to this church. Somewhere around in there. Somewhere around in there. I understand the numbers as far as the... I, I really don't care about that board most time, to be honest with you, amen. But the numbers as far as theirs went down some, amen, and with this virus and everything on. But I remember, I mean, it was, it, was, it was kind of bare. God laid it on my heart. Go out and knock on the door. 
I remember some folks told me, said, it's useless. It's a waste of time. Amen. And, and, and we had folks coming that visited from, from, the, from the knocking on the door. And we had different things going. Amen. But I noticed folks that didn't even, uh, uh, that we didn't even meet knocking on the door. God brought to the church. That I never, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. There's some in here this morning, that, that, uh, several in here this morning, matter of fact, that God brought to the church that we didn't knock on your door, as far as I know. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this, we did the work of God, amen? You, do, you get in the will of God, and God will produce results, amen. amen? You can look around and say, well, bless God, none of them people you knocked on the door are here this morning. That's what you sound like, amen? <laughs> what you sound like. Yeah, but God produced results, brother. God, produce, God doesn't always use the results the way you think it's going to come. Amen. But it'll be better. Amen. God knows what you need. Let me say this, friend. Amen. He's limited in the cave. Look at verse number 10. Real, real, real quick this morning. He's limited in this cave. Uh, say, preacher, what do you mean? He's trapped in his own head. Elijah's trapped in his own head. Look at verse 10. He said, no, notice, notice, notice Elijah's rebuttal to the Lord. He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant and thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Say, say, preacher, what do you mean? Let me read that again and help you. He said, I, positive thing, have been very jealous for the Lord going to host. And then he said, for the children of Israel, they, negative thing, have forsaken thy covenant. And they have thrown down thine altars, Lord. He said, and they have slain thy prophets with the sword. And then he comes back and said, I, oh, I'm, I'm the good side. Remember me, Lord, I, even I, I only. He said, I, I. He, he, he put two eyes in there. He said, I, even I. I only am left. And then he said, but they, they seek my life. You know what Elijah does? He sits there all puffed up. Amen. He must have been a Baptist. He sits there all puffed up and he, and he says, I, 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 they, 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 I, 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 they, 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 I, they, I, they. You're limited when you start doing that. Boy, you get trapped in your own head. That's where Elijah's at. Amen. You get outside of the will of God, the only thing, amen. I don't know about you, amen. Uh, uh, I can say this probably uh, 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 pretty comfortably, amen, about myself, amen. I don't want to be trapped in my own thoughts. <laughs> amen. I sure don't, amen, want to be trapped in my own thoughts, amen. If I ain't careful, I get there when I get outside of the will of God. Amen. You will too, amen. As long as you're in the cave, let me say this, friend, you're limited. Amen. Not only that, but let me say this. Uh, the second point I see in this, as long as you're in the cave, you're a loser. I don't mean that in, as an insult rather than you're a loser in the fact you'll never win in the cave. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I mean this, the, the victory will not come in the cave. Amen? You're, we all, we, we'll say it all the time because it sounds nice. Boy, I, I'd love to, I want to live a victorious Christian life. Being victorious Christian living does not come outside of the will of God. I mean, if you really want to live a victorious Christian life, you've got to live it God's way. Amen. I believe it was, uh, I can't remember if it was Sunday night, some, some maybe Wednesday, I don't know, it wasn't Wednesday night. It was some, a uh, few services ago, we spoke on that for a minute, how there is a certain way. It's last Sunday morning, actually. There is a certain way that God's people live. There is a certain way. One. One way. Amen. That's it. Amen. There, there is a, a, a certain. That word certain means exact. Exact. Amen. That means if it's a sin for me, it's going to be a sin for you. Amen. That means if it's wrong for, if you think your neighbor ought not do it, then you ought not do it. Amen. Amen. Boy, God ain't changed. God ain't changed. God ain't changed his mind. God ain't, let me say this. I'm glad. <laughs> It's going to go over real good this morning. I'm glad that God ain't a progressive thinker. I said, well, you still uh, preach against homosexuality. Yes, I do. It's biblical to preach against that. It's wrong. You're not, pro you're not a progressive thinker. The world has progressed. 
Bible ain't. Bible ain't. God's still the same. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Uh, 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 well, you, 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 you still believe in that King James Bible. The times have progressed. The church has progressed. I'm afraid the church has progressed so much they've left God. Amen. I'm afraid we've gotten so concerned with progress and moving forward, amen, and trying to keep up with the times that we've left God in the dust. Amen. Hey, friend, let me say this, friend. It don't take, amen, strobe lights. It don't take the palm machine. It don't take uh, the, the concert hall music. Amen. It don't take taking that microphone and <laughs> looking like a moron, amen, and everything else, amen, to get people uh, concerned about God, amen. The Word of God still works, amen. The way of God still works, amen. And, and let me say this, the will of God still works. Amen. amen. I was caught between another message. I was going to preach on a, a, an old message that I preached one time on, on some things that'll last, and I just preached the whole message just then. <laughs> yeah. and the will of God, the Word of God, and the, and, and, and the way of God will always last. Amen. 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 You get a hold of that. Amen. You got two messages. Go, go to work tomorrow and say, Preacher preached two messages yesterday morning. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> I ain't going back. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let me say this, friend. As long as you're in the cave, you're a loser. You, you, you can't win. Amen. Let me say this. Elijah was a lot better off at the widow's house. And Elijah was a lot better off on Mount Carmel. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I want you to notice this. Uh, Elijah at the widow's house, he was a stranger at that lady's house. That's an odd place to be, ain't it? <laughs> I mean, unless you just like hanging out with strangers, amen. It's going to be odd, amen. Amen. He was a stranger at that lady's house, amen. But it was in the will of God. And up on Mount Carmel, friend, he ain't got no friends. I mean, 450 folks, and he's just standing there alone. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody bold enough to stand with him. Nobody believes enough to stand with him. Amen. It's just Elijah and 450 prophets of Baal that are coming at him. Amen. My Bible is not a liar. My Bible is exact. It said he's slain all of them with the sword. I believe he used the same sword. Amen. I believe, I believe he took them out. Amen. Let, let me say, let me, let me get a hold of this. Let, let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. In those two places, amen, he's, he's, at, he's, he's uncomfortable in one and he's outnumbered in the other. But he was in the will of God in both. Sometimes you'll get out, uh, outnumbered. I mean, you stand for this King James Bible very long. And you tell somebody you stand. For this King James Bible. Amen. And you tell somebody that NIV is garbage. And tell them your preacher said so. I don't care. Amen. But you tell somebody that. Amen. Because you're talking to them, not me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Amen. But no, you tell somebody that that new King James is garbage. You tell somebody there's false, uh, there, there's, there's false doctrine in those Bibles. You tell somebody those things. Amen. And you'll find quickly you're outnumbered. You'll find quickly in this world, you'll be outnumbered quickly, quickly, quickly. Say, preacher, what do you mean? I, I, I read over there in Matthew chapter number 7. Let me just say this very briefly, amen. I, I, it's, a good, it's a good thing to be outnumbered. Amen. said, uh, enter you in at the straight gate. And then it said that uh, broad is the way. Uh, wide, uh, wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Amen. But it said, and narrow is the way. And straight is the gate. Amen. That leadeth to life everlasting. And few there be which find it. Amen. I'm glad. I, I'll, be, I'll be just fine being outnumbered. Amen. Won't you? 